In this problem, we have a cork cube suspended from a soft spring at the bottom of a beaker. This is a little weird. Well, let's go ahead and just draw it here. So here's your beaker. There's the little thing. And uh, yeah, it's full of liquid. I think we say it's water, probably. Yes, yeah, beaker with water. And what it means is, you know, a cork cube, if this is the cube here, would normally float, right? See, its density is much less than water, so there's a spring holding it down. It's attached to the bottom of the thing with the spring. So there it is, and we have some numbers. We have the depth um, of the beaker, 70 centimeters, and we also have how far down is the top of the cork. And let's see, we have the spray constant and the density and the size, two by two by two centimeter. Okay, but the question is, how much is the spring stretched? So this is a problem that's not just fluid mechanics or not just hydrostatics, but it's also a little bit of forces and physics in there to mix them up and make sure you understand them. So let's see, if, if it is suspended, that's the part that tells you this is a statics problem. This is just sitting here. So the way you solve this one is think about the forces for the cases that it is static. So in the y direction, the sum of the forces is zero. So we'll make the y direction up. So I just have to think about the cube and what are all the forces acting on the cube. So to start, there's the weight down as usual. Negative because I'm just positive will be up and negative will be down and I'll not write out the vector notation. Uh, let's see, there's the weight down. What uh, else is there? There's the buoyant force pushing it up. And then finally, the spring force pulling it down. And if you're not sure how I knew that was negative or how you would know that's negative in a problem, one is that it said that the spring is extended. So it would have to be if you extend the spring, the force is in uh, opposite direction as the extension. And also because that's the only way this thing is going to work, because you know that um, the that, uh, um, the buoyant force is bigger than the weight, so it'll fly up, right? Because it's the the weight of the water displaced, and the cork has a lower density than the water, so this force is bigger than this force, so that's why the cork floats. So the only way you're going to keep the cork from going up and floating is if the spring force is down. So there's a few ways to know that the spring force has to be down. <coughs> So here we go, let's start plugging in. And let's keep with symbols for a minute so we can see the way some things combine here. So the mass of the cork cube, uh, we could actually go ahead and just write it as the density of the cork, the density of cork right there, um, times the volume of the cork, which we will be able to get because we know it's two to about two by two times G. And then how do you get buoyant force? It's the weight of the water displaced. So the, usually the safe way to write it is this, the density of the fluid, in this case, the density of water. And then often we'll write just V displaced. In this case, that's just the full volume of the cork cube. But when things are floating, sometimes it's less. So we usually uh, denote it displaced to make it clear that that's the volume they refer to. And then uh, times G. And then let's see, the spring force is just K times the displacement. So we have K, I'll just write K. <clears throat> and then times the delta Y, we'll say that doesn't really refer to the position of the cork, it refers to the displacement of the spring. We'll just call it delta Y. So those have to be zero. All right, so let's see which of these things we know. So in this case, let's make it very clear, in this case, <laughs> The volume of the cork equals the volume displaced. That's true because it's completely submerged. For floating problems, which you'll definitely see, that's not going to be true. But since it's true this time, I want to do that because then you can see we can the v and the g go together. You can pull out the uh, the two um, densities. So I can simplify this a little bit and say that it is equal to um, the density of water minus the density of cork. Uh, times that total volume of, of the cork of the whole thing times G. So we just that minus that, and that equals K delta Y. 
Okay. I'm just trying to simplify the algebra a little bit. It's not really necessary. Now we can start plugging in numbers. The density of water, I'm going to do the whole thing in MKS units, is 1,000. The density of cork, convert that to MKS units, 240. So there you can see the cork is less dense than water. The volume of the cube is 2 times 2 times 2. We've got to convert centimeters cubed to meters cubed, so that's 10 to the minus 6. So it's 8 times 10 to the minus 6. And then 9.8. And then the spring constant we're just given in MKS units 11.4. And then how much the string is, uh, the spring is extended. So you can see from there, it's just numbers at this point. It's 760 times that, times that, divide by that, and you get 0 0.0052. But it asks for it in centimeters, or at least in the online system, it asks for it in centimeters. So the answer is 0 0.52 centimeters. That's how much the spring has to be uh, stretched for this to remain suspended, which means static. There's a follow-up question that asks, does the depth of the cube affect the buoyant force? And that's kind of getting at why did we give you all these numbers? Does it matter? 70 centimeters, 11 centimeters, and really it doesn't. We just gave you those to help you kind of make you think about that a little bit for the second question. Does it matter? And the answer is no. So the buoyant force is always simply the weight of the fluid that was displaced. And the weight of the fluid doesn't depend on the depth assuming the fluid has a constant density because it's incompressible. Um, so it doesn't matter if the core cube is here or down here or here or here or here, it's always going to have the same buoyant force. And if you want to even see that better, you can go back to how we calculated buoyant force. It was a pressure difference between the top and the bottom. Right? So that difference doesn't matter where you are, the difference will always be the same. Even if the hydrostatic pressure is changing as you go through different depths, buoyant force is a difference in hydrostatic pressure. And it's linear with depth, so the difference doesn't matter. Anyway, that's how you get the number, and that's just a little bit of insight on the buoyant force. It's constant as you move around and up and down.